Imagine the era when there was no atmosphere of research and time in India. At the ambience, some persons began making the original contributions to experimental science. At a time when no one from this country was into the field, Sir J. C. Bose built all the equipment in the visible form that exists today in the University of Calcutta. Do you know who is J. C. Bose? Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose was the father of Bengali science fiction and inventor of crescograph. His contribution was the founding stone of wireless communication like Wi-Fi, radio, internet that we enjoy today. He did the world's first experiment on similarity of response from living and non-living. We are the technology-influenced mankind. Standing in the 21st century, science, experiments and all surrounding objects that we enjoy today in our progressive daily life, we must know about its origin and that brings us to Sir J. C. Bose and his contributions. Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose was born on 13th November 1858 at Maimansingh, now in Bangladesh. His father, Bhagwan Chandra Bose, was a deputy magistrate and mother was Bama Shundari Bose. He was raised in a home committed to pure Indian traditions and culture. He received his elementary education from a vernacular school because his father believed that Bose should learn his own native language and culture before learning foreign language like English. As a teenager, Bose attended St. Javier School and then St. Javier's College in Calcutta. In 1875, Bose passed the entrance examination of University of Calcutta. He was sent to England to become a doctor, but he failed because he couldn't stand the odor of chemicals. But that led him to physics. He continued on at the University of Cambridge and then University of London and came back to India with a Bachelor of Science degree. He became one of the professors of physics at Presidency College. He was paid just 100 rupees a month. This is just one third of any of the equivalent British qualification. In spite of all these obstacles, his invention changed the world. He was married to Srimati Abala Dash in 1887. Abala Dash was a student of medicine when she was married to Jesse Bose. In 1917, Bose left his professorship and established the Bose Institute at Calcutta, which was initially devoted principally to the study of plants. He was the director for 20 years until his death. Sir J.C. Bose was knighted in 1917 and elected the Fellow of Royal Society in 1920 for his amazing contribution and achievements. He passed away at the age of 78 on 23rd November in 1937. Bose made remarkable progress in his research of wireless signaling and was the first to detect radio signals. In 1895, Sir J.C. Bose used electromagnetic waves to ring a bell from the distance of 75 feet passing the walls, just like Wi-Fi. This was two years before Marconi invented the radio. Marconi used Bose Mercury Cohorter. Bose also generated 5mm electromagnetic waves 60 GHz before instruments even evolved to measure frequencies that low. The millimeter wave that Jesse Bose worked on is the backbone of today's 5G technology. But that's not the end of Sir Jesse Bose's inventions.
Sir J.C. Bose was also a pioneer in the field of biophysics and was the first person to suggest that plants too can feel pain and understand affection. He was also the first to study the action of microwaves in plant tissues and corresponding changes in the cell membrane potential. He was the inventor of crystallograph and many other instruments that are still used in microwave technology. Acharya J.C. Bose himself devised a delicate instrument which could measure even this slow growth and he called it Crescograph. This is a replica of the Crescograph at the Bose Institute in Kolkata. This is where he used to fix the plant specimen and conduct various experiments. This equipment was capable of recording the rate of plant growth automatically at a high magnification of 10,000 times. Plants do not grow in perfect straight lines. There are small twists and turns. The growth of the plant is affected by these and that is why these dots on the smoked glass screen appear curved instead of being straight. Each dot indicates the plant growth in a fraction of a time. The combination of two levers here play an important part in magnifying the extraordinarily slow growth of plants. It is the bent tip of the second lever which marks these dots on the smoked glass screen which is driven by a clockwork mechanism. To minimize friction, Acharya J.C. Bose arranged the plate in such a way that it moved forward and backward. The smoked glass screen can also move from left to right as well. This device was also used to study the effect of temperature and light on plant growth. He also used it to look at the effect of poison and electric current on the growth of plants. The performance of this instrument was demonstrated throughout the world by Acharya J.C. Bose from 1914 onwards. There are scores of equipments that Acharya J.C. Bose designed and there are many that he fabricated himself. All these equipments testify the genius of a great Indian scientist whose work united in one man the fields of physics and physiology and who found out more about plants than anyone else before him. Well, there is an interesting story about a demonstration that Bose gave in England on the day he wanted to show some new things that he had found out. He had come to the conclusion that plants can feel pain like animals and when we pinch them they suffer and that they die in a few minutes after they are poisoned. Bose wanted to show experiments to prove these conclusions. A number of scientists and other leading men and women had gathered to hear him. Bose started the experiments by injecting poison into a plant. The plant should have shown signs of death in a few minutes. On the contrary, nothing happened. The learned audience started laughing. Even at this adverse moment, Bose showed admirable calmness. He thought quickly. The poison that he injected into the plant did not kill it. 
so he supposed that it would not hurt him also. With full confidence, he got ready to inject the poison into himself. At that instant, a man got up and confessed. I accept my defeat, Mr. Bose. It was I who replaced the poison with similar colored water. Now Bose conducted the experiment again with real poison and sure did the plant wither and die as expected. Sir G. C. Bose was also known as the father of science fiction. He was the first to translate Tagore's work in English. He was a regular writer of literal magazines like Varad Varsha, Prabashi, etc. His writings were compiled in the book titled Of Bokto. Palatok Tufan, written by him, was the first science fiction in Bengali literature. He was also elected the president of Banga Sahitya Parishad. Can you guess whose voice was this? It was Tigur's voice. Bose recorded Tigur's voice way back in 1905 with assistance of his nephew, Himanku Bose. Jesse Bose was so ahead of his time that he was borderline controversial. All of his life, he worked in a room of just 24 square feet big because he lived in a colonized India. He was always denied to access a fully equipped laboratory. But he believed that the true laboratory is in the mind, where behind illusions we uncover the laws of truth. He also said, the more difficult is the task, the greater is the challenge. For you have gained the visions of a purpose to which you can and must dedicate yourself wholly, the closed doors will be opened and the seemingly impossible will become fully attainable. Here, we represented to you a concise anecdote of the indelible work of Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose, the father of Bengali science fiction. He was a man of many talents. He was truly a rare gem and a guiding star to today's dynamic science generation. He will always be within us through his remarkable contribution. <laughs>